Hi guys, welcome to Thursday. We are October 8th, if you can believe that. Almost Halloween time. Uh, this video is in response to module six, and we're gonna talk a little bit about strategic editing. If you have your packets, we're in the quotation and citation packet. Um, that may make it easier for some of you. And I heard some of you don't have printer access, so again, the invitation is open. I have a pile this high of packets that are ready uh, for pickup so that you don't have to kill your printer. Um, I want to point out a couple of things. All I'm looking for here is really that you do the task being asked. Don't overthink it. The template teaches you the essay structure. The completion check is focusing on completion, as the title indicates. Um, our words check are really maturing our words from baby words, repetition, vague and meaningless words to adding message and meaning um, throughout. If you have the quotation citation packet or you click on the PDF, I want to point out a few things. The page, I think it's the back side of the second page. It says, if there is no author, then the title or heading is listed either in the sentence or in the parenthesis. So you'll notice that if you were to take a highlighter and highlight Smith, 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 sometimes Smith's last name is in the sentence, sometimes it's in the parenthesis. When we get out here to the works cited, Smith, John, the only thing that really matters is between the last name in the sentence or parenthesis and your works cited. This is exactly what you're going to do for the citation check. You're going to highlight last name, highlight um, title or heading. I have a cat that eats plastic, which is weird. Okay. The next thing that you have in the quotation citation PDF is questions. How long should my quote be? What needs to be quoted? What's the difference between quotation and citation? What's the difference between MLA and APA? What do I do if there's no author? Should I have web addresses listed? What if the source material does not have a date? What if the assignment asks for six quotes? Do I have to have six different sources? Can I use the same source more than once and how is it listed on the works cited page? If no title I'm quoting, if the title I'm quoting is long, do I have to do the entire thing in my in-text citation? And then I give you examples. And then the next document is the same thing, the very basics of your quotes, your citation for works cited reference page. And this document has all of your templates for APA, MLA, how to cite a video, how to cite an interview. No. Um, so these are useful documents and I want you to really dig in and get to know them. I gave you a sample works cited page and I show you last name, last name, title or heading with no author for web um, and for interviewer observation. So this document is a really important document. Um, it's in your quotation citation PDF. Now we get to essay editing. So of course we're at the words check this week right now uh, for 6.4. A, you've done the completion check. Now we're to the words draft. So here are the directions for the words draft, okay? You're gonna finish the essay, completion check draft one. All 27 parts of the essay are done. The words draft, from non-formal to formal, from common to academic. Circle all of the words on this list, regardless of where they appear. Circle the number of circled words and put that number at the top of your page. Work against that number, making the choices about each individual word circled. Edit, define, describe, delete, simplify with comma rules, or restructure a sentence as necessary to remove 90% of your circled words. So there are a couple of different classifications. And again, this is in the sentence editing uh, or the editing portion of your quotation citation PDF that is uh, listed in all sorts of places, but I'll make sure you have access to it um, also in the resources and uh, 6.4. So you were supposed to circle you, your, us, our, we, I, me, my, myself, thing, anything, something, nothing, everything, might, may, seems, maybe, if, contractions, but, if so, or, and, only at the start of sentences, not if they're used as a coordinating conjunction. 
that an it can and will could would should very many much big hot cold bad any word used twice in a sentence and any content word used twice in two touching sentences so you circle 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 that is your task right once all your circling is done you should be watching this video and incidentally i made the essay due on tuesday the 13th so even though these editing drafts are due by Sunday night, actually the essay is due on the 13th because I think that you need that time. Uh, I'm still waiting for a lot of people to even get their first draft in. And then they have to catch up, of course, with editing. Um, okay, I also received a question about the toolbox quizzes. You've already taken it twice. These are the quizzes that I'm asking you about um, sentence structure introduction grabbers, the comma rules, your five principles of academic writing, those are considered your tools as a writer. And so I'm gonna keep quizzing you on this till the very end. You can't forget that stuff. You need to memorize it and know how to use it. Um, so once we have our circled words, a well-developed essay should have about 100 words circled. If you have less, that's fine. If you have more, that's fine. You're gonna count your circles and put that number on top. If you have 100 words circled, the goal is to edit out 90%. So I would only be left with 10 words. That means I have to make a choice for each of these words, okay? And in your next um, module, I think actually before this one maybe, you uh, have to post word or sentences where these words exist. Those are the sentences where you're just not sure how to edit the words out, and then your classmates and I are going to help you. Okay, how we edit them depends on what the word is and the reason that it's problematic. So that's the purpose of this lecture. I'm gonna go through this word list and I'm gonna explain the different categories of words and why they're a problem. Okay, so here we go. You, your is a problem. And the main reason it's a problem is because it mixes the message with the writer. You're not the topic, okay? You're proving something. And if you've ever seen a puppet show Here's the puppet show. You never see the puppeteer's hands in the show. And the reason for that is because it would be distracting to the audience, right? We'd be paying attention to the hands and not watching the show. The same thing is true in an essay. We know you are the writer. So you do not say, I wrote it, I think, I believe, I know. And you also don't say you, 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 okay? You is ambiguous, it's vague, and it confuses the reader with your audience. I'm reading it, you're not talking to me you're talking to your audience. So you should always identify the you by name, by title, or by category. If I say, you need to consider going to school, well, I don't, I've already gone to school. Well, who then needs to consider? Oh, teenagers coming out of high school should consider going to school. That makes more sense. And that I can agree to, okay? So you're gonna replace your yous and yours with definition and description identify who it is you're actually speaking about, okay? 100% of those should be gone. The next category is us, our, and we. This is huge because the problem with us, our, and we is it confuses me with you. It's not our family. We didn't grow up together. It's not our town. Some of you hate the desert. It's not our country. Some of you are nationals from other places. So when we say us or we, we're speaking for people that we have no right to speak for. Now, sometimes the problem with us or we is that it's redundant. Um, I, I saw one thesis that said something like, we comma the residents of Coachella Valley comma. Why not just say the residents of Coachella Valley worry about the Salton Sea? You don't need to say we, okay? Address specifically who or what you're talking about or to. Leave yourself out of it. No we's and s's, okay? So 100% of those should be gone. And you're going to do that through detailed description and definition. So now I, me, my confuses you with the topic, you with the message. 100% of these should be gone. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't speak from personal experience. What it means is that you speak to the topic from an informed position but you don't become the message, you don't become the topic. 
So let's say that you're discussing what parents need to know when dealing with bullies. Um, most of us have a bully story, right? I was in fifth grade and I got bullied by a girl named Kenny. She was gigantic. I was small. Uh, she spoke multiple languages. I spoke one. She cornered me in a car door window and I protected my head like this. And then when it came down to getting in trouble, we got in trouble for fighting, except I was not fighting. I was the victim of the situation. Now, I could tell this story in first person, but the truth is, it's irrelevant, and I'm not the only one who's experienced bullying. So what I learned from that experience, I'm going to explain in third person. I'm going to say that oftentimes fifth graders find themselves in situations where the differences between them become the, the target of the bullying. For example, size, language, uh, maybe financial security or socioeconomic status. These all contribute to a bullying situation in elementary school. How do I know? Well, I lived through it. But am I going to talk about me? No, my essay is about bullying. So I'm simply going to inform the topic with my understanding and first person knowledge. So 100% of I, me, my, myself, they need to be gone. You need to speak to the topic with your knowledge, but not make it about you. Okay. Thing, anything, something, nothing, everything. 100% of these need to go. They should go through definition, detail, and description. The problem with the word thing is it's vague. It's ambiguous. It means nothing. So every time I see the word thing, I put in the word toilet. And if you're not talking about toilets, then your essay doesn't make sense. Your sentence doesn't make sense. You have to define what thing is. So uh, there are things in school that make college hard. Okay, that's true. Money, time, and family obligation makes being in college hard. I've replaced the thing completely, and I've defined it with what I'm actually speaking about. Might, may, seems, maybe, if. A hundred of these words should be gone through detail, concrete, definitive verbs, is, am, are, was, and were. It seems, it is, it might be, it does. They are, it is, should be, is, does, am, are. Now the only place in your essay where futuristic words could, should, would, might is appropriate is in the conclusion. And if we were in the classroom, this would become a question. Why are those words appropriate for the conclusion? And the answer is the conclusion is about the future. That's the only place where we're hypothetic, uh, dealing with hypotheticals, hypothesis, guessing, um, maybes. And so those words, if you choose to keep one, would have to be in your conclusion, but they're not appropriate words for the body and for the introduction. So we're going to replace those with con concrete verbs, definitive verbs, is, am, are, was, were. Contractions. Contractions are problematic. They're slang. You don't use them. Don't becomes do not. Can't because becomes cannot. Won't becomes will not, and so on. This is a very simple one. You just break the words up and you say what you mean. Uh, but if so or and at the start of a sentence, 100% of these words should be gone. You're going to replace it with the appropriate transition. Now, again, we're not talking about comma rule number two, using it as a coordinating conjunction to combine two sentences. That's not what we're talking about, okay? We're talking about using and, but, if, or so at the beginning of a sentence instead of a college level transition. So and should become additionally comma, but, however, conversely, comma. Uh, so, therefore, thus, consequently, comma. And if, uh, perhaps, although, meanwhile, simultaneously, comma. We don't want to use contractions at the beginning of a sentence. That's wrong. That and it. Notice, please, that nine out of 10 should be deleted. You're going to restructure the sentence as necessary. So it is important becomes learning is important. I'm going to define the it or the that. Sometimes you need these words. That's why you're only taking out nine out of 10. But most of the time, these are fillers, and you can always restructure the sentence. It is good to live in the desert. Living in the desert is good. Uh, 
that table is messy. The table in the kitchen is messy. So that and it, absolutely you can edit those out. Can and will. Nine out of 10 should be deleted. These should only appear in the conclusion about the future. You're gonna restructure the sentence as needed, replace with concrete detail, definitive verbs, is, am, are, was, were, or you drop the verb completely and add an S. School will help can become school helps. And then finish the sentence. What does it actually help with? School helps build a person's confidence, okay? Could, should, would. Nine out of 10 should be deleted. They should only appear in the conclusion about the future. Restructure the sentence as needed. Replace with concrete detail, definitive verb, uh, verbs, is, am, are, was, were. Or again, you drop it completely and add an S to the verb. School could help become school helps. And again, you need to finish the sentence. Very many, much, big, hot, cold, good, bad, tall, shut, short, young, old. You're going to define these with concrete details. They're considered dead adjectives. And the problem with these words is that they're subjective. What is very heavy? Five pounds or 25 tons? What is hot? 104 degrees? To me, that's not hot. I'm like, oh, it's only 104. We're in October. But my relatives come over here in November and it's 60 and they think it's hot. Well, that's because their cold is negative something something. My cold is 60, right? And so if you can define these words with a number, it's in your best interest to do so. Content words used twice in the same sentence. This is a matter of simplifying the sentence and really refining with um, synonyms. And content words into touching sentences. Drop, change, or edit, or restructure. And then very finally, all quotes must be introduced by some sort of signal phrase at the start of a sentence. It is wrong to begin a sentence with a quote. You have to introduce it somehow. You introducing it is you talking your sentence. The quote does not count as a subject verb. Your subject verb has to come from you, okay? So that is how you do the words edit. And of course, the next thing you're gonna do is a sentence edit. Those directions are very explicit. You have both the directions on Canvas um, and as a PDF or a downloadable document. If any links don't work, please text me and let me know. Text me, text me, text me. That's the fastest way to get a real-time response without any kind of delay. And once I finish uploading this video, I will go back and start um, regrading resubmissions, both for higher grades, clarity, and completion. So if there's anything that you need to resubmit, keep resubmitting because I am allowing you to get the best grade possible. Uh, I haven't closed Canvas yet to submissions. So keep resubmitting your old work. Uh, very lastly, your quizzes. Do them more than once if you're not getting perfect scores. Don't give up on a low score, okay? You have at least three tries on almost every quiz and I need you to take advantage of that. So happy October. Happy Thursday, and remember the essay is due next Tuesday. That gives you Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to finish your editing process. You've got five days to go. I'll talk to you soon.